Although the Mona Lisa is now enshrined in the Louvre, it has not always belonged to the French people as a national treasure. Instead, various French rulers moved the Mona Lisa to their estates before it ever graced a museum's walls. King Francis I hung it in his Fontainebleau Palace. King Louis XIV used it at Versailles. Even Napoleon Bonaparte once owned the Mona Lisa, displaying the masterpiece in his boudoir. One of history's most famous pieces of art is the Mona Lisa. Painted by Leonardo da Vinci between 1503 and 1506, it has fascinated people for hundreds of years, partially because of how the eyes appear to follow the viewer and partially for the half-smile that graces the portrait's face. It draws the viewer in, but experts still try to unravel the mystery behind the painting's timeless allure. How did the Mona Lisa become so iconic out of thousands of portraits gracing museum walls and private collections? It's time to uncover the mystery of the Mona Lisa and examine how an oil portrait on wood has managed to captivate humanity and how her mystery continues to impact us today. Who does the Mona Lisa portray? Part of the mystery of the Mona Lisa is historians do not know who the Mona Lisa depicts for sure. The popular belief states that the portrait shows Lisa Gherardini, the wife of Francesco del Giacondo. He was a Florentine silk merchant. While the picture does not leave any clues about the lady's identity, historians do know da Vinci was painting a portrait of Giardini around 1503. They commissioned the work to celebrate the family's new home and the birth of Lisa and Francesco's second son. The Mona Lisa is also called La Gioconda, which is Italian for happy or jovial. It could also be a play upon Giacondo, Lisa's married name. Connecting the Mona Lisa with Lisa Gherardini was first suggested by da Vinci's biographer, Giorgio Vasari, who wrote in 1550, about 30 years after da Vinci's death. However, while historians have been able to confirm da Vinci did paint a portrait of the lady, they have not been able to verify if the Mona Lisa is the same portrait. Some of the difficulty arises from the fact that the Mona Lisa was never given to the Giacondo family which one would expect from a commissioned work. Instead, it traveled with Leonardo da Vinci when he moved to France, and he died with the portrait among his personal items. Other experts have suggested alternate possibilities regarding the Mona Lisa's identity throughout the years. Some believe the portrait depicts Isabella d'Este, Lisa Gherardino's cousin, but others have argued for other wealthy women in the Renaissance, such as Isabella of Aragon. Even Sigmund Freud has offered an opinion stating the Mona Lisa was da Vinci's mother, Caterina, and arguing the smile was an unconscious memory or desire for approval. Perhaps one of the most interesting theories states the Mona Lisa does not depict a woman at all. Instead, some have argued that portrait depicts Leonardo da Vinci himself. While historians do not know why he would have disguised himself as a woman for this self-portrait, they have noted some similarities in the facial structure. As da Vinci was a scientific man fascinated with the dissection of the human body, such similarities were probably not accidental. Despite attempts to exhume Leonardo da Vinci and Lisa Gherardini to check facial structures, we may never know who the Mona Lisa portrays. It is part of her timeless mystery and allows viewers to connect more deeply with the painting. Art historians continue to examine the portrait in an attempt to discover who it represents. But the numerous theories only prove we still have investigating to do if we ever want to find the answer to this timeless mystery. What makes the Mona Lisa unique? In addition to an unknown subject, the Mona Lisa is unique in other ways, although most people might not think a portrait would be able to change the course of Western art. Although it may be surprising to us today, the Mona Lisa was not painted on canvas. Da Vinci, like other Renaissance artists, preferred to create his smaller works on wood planks instead of canvas, even though canvas was readily available. The portrait is 30 inches by 21 inches, making it much smaller than people may initially think. The portrait shows a woman from the waist up who resembles the Virgin Mary, as Renaissance art traditionally did. However, Leonardo da Vinci was an expert at experimenting. The woman sits in a three-quarter view, mostly turned toward the viewer. This was unusual in Italian art at the time, which usually presented portraits in profile. Da Vinci's innovation changed how people painted portraits, making the primarily front-facing depictions more popular at the time and stretching into the present day. Da Vinci also broke with contemporary Renaissance tradition by showing the Mona Lisa's hands. This was unusual. Portraits usually stopped around the bus line, but not unheard of during this time. 
By adding her hands, da Vinci made his subject seem more accessible. Of course, da Vinci did more than rotate the depicted subject and showcase her hands. He also carefully used sfumato, an art technique focused on delicate shading that leaves a smoky softness. Sfumato eliminates harsh lines, allowing the artist to play with light and dark. Da Vinci used this technique to reveal the muscles and shape of the skull, making the Mona Lisa's smile look startlingly realistic and alive. Experts say the Mona Lisa is the first known anatomical drawing of a smile, which da Vinci learned about from his dissections and scientific interest in the human body. Da Vinci's eye for realistic detail goes beyond the woman's face. It extends to her delicate veil, hair, and clothing, which echoes the landscape behind her and balances the whole painting. The sfumato also creates an ambiguous mood throughout the portrait. All of the shading around the Mona Lisa's eyes and mouth makes it difficult for the observer to determine her exact attitude. Although her eyes, looking almost straight at the viewer, appear to be genuinely looking out of the masterpiece. The landscape itself was another artistic development. The Mona Lisa is one of the first Italian portraits with an imaginary landscape, although some have noted it resembles the Montefeltro region in Italy. Da Vinci was also one of the first artists to use an aerial perspective, which adds to the mystery of this art piece. The background landscape of the Mona Lisa is vast. The horizon line sits at the Mona Lisa's eye level and contains icy mountains and stretches of dark land. There are a few meandering paths and a bridge, which suggests some human presence, but the landscape is mostly untamed. The timeless impact of the Mona Lisa changed artistic development. Da Vinci's free experimentation gave other artists the confidence to begin their own experiments. Some young painters, like Raphael, even practiced sketching da Vinci's sketches, strengthening the entire Renaissance artistic community. His influence also changed how people created portraits. They became more than an accurate likeness of a human and looked into what makes an ideal person, making portraits more timeless than before. How did the Mona Lisa become one of the most famous paintings in the world? Da Vinci was an Italian artist, so it may surprise some people that his most famous masterpiece belongs to the French. Various experts have suggested why the Mona Lisa was still in da Vinci's possession when he died. Some have suggested the portrait of Lisa Ghirardini served as a model for the Mona Lisa. In that case, da Vinci started both paintings around the same time in 1503. But other experts believe he did not begin working on the Mona Lisa until much later in life. Da Vinci likely worked on the Mona Lisa off and on for years. The layers of oil glaze on the painting come from different times. While experts are unsure if da Vinci ever declared the work complete, the work came with him when he moved to King Francis I's court in 1516, where he was an engineer, architect, and painter. After he died in 1519, the Mona Lisa became part of the French king's collection. It remained hidden away at various French palaces, spending time at Versailles before the French Revolution. The piece stayed with Napoleon for a few years before finally becoming part of the Louvre's collection a few years later. While we may think the Mona Lisa has always been central to Western culture, the general public was not exceptionally aware of it until 1911. The Louvre Museum in Paris only acquired the painting in 1804, but even art critics did not pay much attention to it until the 1860s. Renaissance critics enjoyed the painting's realism, but Victorian critics saw great mysteries in the soft shadows. However, the painting's timeless secrets were given a new light in 1911 pushing the piece into the public spotlight. That summer, on August 21st, the picture was stolen. Newspapers announced the story worldwide, quickly building a following for the image. Famous artists like Pablo Picasso were accused of the theft, although they were later proven innocent. People eventually discovered it was stolen by Vincenzo Perugia, a carpenter working at the Louvre. He had helped construct the painting's glass case. To conduct his heist, he hid in a closet during regular museum hours until the building closed, put the image under his jacket, and walked out. Perugia believed the picture belonged to an Italian museum because he was an Italian patriot, but in the following international panic, he found it difficult to sell. While he was waiting, people came to see the empty space where the Mona Lisa had hung. Merchants created dolls, postcards, and even corsets inspired by the missing masterpiece hinting at how the Mona Lisa would later be parodied and used for advertising. 
Eventually, Perugia grew impatient and attempted to sell it to the Uffizi Gallery in Florence two years after his theft, where he was immediately caught. Once the painting was found and returned to the Louvre, the world rejoiced, and over 100,000 people came to see this famous painting in the first two days. Public interest in the masterpiece has continued ever since. Today, the Mona Lisa is known worldwide. The Louvre displays the painting in its largest room, drawing millions of tourists annually. The masterpiece is protected by a glass display case, which keeps the picture at a steady temperature and helps discourage vandalism. Despite its international renown, some people have attempted to damage or destroy the Mona Lisa over the years. In 1956, one person threw a rock and another threw acid at the painting. Thankfully, the damage was not severe, but it is still noticeable today. The bulletproof glass now protects the painting from other miscreants, allowing us to preserve it for future generations. Although we can preserve and continue to admire it, the Mona Lisa still holds her secrets. She is part of France's collection, a priceless edition that cannot be sold, and although experts still wonder over her mysteries, her knowing smile transcends time. The Mona Lisa continues to capture the imaginations of each generation. She has changed how we make art and influenced how we appreciate it, even if we are no closer to understanding her mysteries 500 years after da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa. Until then, we'll have to enjoy her timeless beauty and mystery and wonder why she is smiling like she knows something we don't yet. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Italian history, check out our book, History of Italy, A Captivating Guide to Italian History starting from the first settlements through the Middle Ages to the modern period. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.